Hello, BookTube. It's a fraught news day, as some of you will know if you're if you're following along on your iPads. Uh, on the personal front, my uh, legal team and I are still battling this nuisance lawsuit being brought against me by an adult film actress na known as Misty Manatee. Uh, but we expect a, a positive result. It's all a hoax. It's all a witch hunt. Uh, and on the international front, the Nobel Prize Committee for Literature has de has decided that since they are mired in sexual scandal, they will not award an, uh, a Nobel Prize for Literature this year. Which is a bitter disappointment to the 80-year-old woman from Wisconsin who writes the nutritional uh, information on Snickers bars, because uh, she had a real shot this year, and now she's going to have to wait. Uh, but I, international news or personal news notwithstanding, I thought we should at least do a Friday Reads. <laughs> and, and my Friday Reads... It starts off gruesome. <laughs> it starts off gruesome. All of today, all of this evening, and all of tonight, I will be grappling with essentially one book. It's in two volumes only because it's it's a uh, egomaniacal, absolutely insane author could not be dissuaded from publishing it that way. And it's The Carbon Ideologies by William Volman. Volume 1, No Immediate Danger. Volume 2, No Good Alternative. Effectively one book about mankind's relationship with uh, disastrously short-sighted energy production. I've already read it. I've already read Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, and now it's time to grapple. I don't have the finished copy from Volume 2 yet. It'll come any day, but I, I'm not going to wait. I, I want to grapple with this work. I want to understand it. It is certainly the longest and most ambitious work of nonfiction that will come out in 2018. Uh, certainly the longest one of those that will be available commercially where the publisher, uh, poor, godforsaken Viking Press, might be hoping that someone will buy these things. I don't know I don't know who those someone would be. I honestly don't know who that would be. I don't know, for instance, uh, Volume 1 has been in bookstores. And it says Volume 1 right on the cover. It's 800 pages long and it says Volume 1. So I don't know, you know, I can imagine bookstores all over the country people who maybe have read a Volman or two and liked it, th going to the Barnes & Noble information desk and saying, okay, well, this says Volume 1. Do you have Volume 2? Uh, and getting uh, an upheld finger while the person finishes up World of Warcraft or Temple Run on their phone. <sighs> uh, one way or another, though, even if they got me or Deb, they would still get the answer would be no. The Volume 2 isn't out yet. And when Volume 2 comes out, then you're going to have uh, these two things, both of them enormous, on the front release tables at Barnes & Noble. And I don't know who would buy that. I, I, don't, I don't know who... <sighs> One way or another, I'm going to review it. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to be one-third of a review. So uh, it, it's going to be a column, a normal, you know, 850-word column, in which I'm doing three books. I'm... I'm I'm treating the carbon ideologies as one book, which means that I will be writing what will certainly be the most compacted, the shortest review of this book, these two volumes, in any national newspaper. <laughs> so, so, so say a prayer. I want to do it justice, but it's not just the review. I also want to do it justice on my own. I want to understand this on my own. This is a, uh, an author who often maddens me, uh, an author who I, I often think has his head way, way up his Suez Canal. Uh, but he's also really smart. And when he deep thinks on a subject, he gets me thinking deeply on it, too. And it, it's obvious that he put some time into this. So I'm, I'm going to grapple with it. It's, it's my reading for the whole of today. All of today, when I'm not writing, all of this evening, and, and all of tonight. Uh, pencil in hand, even a pad of paper, so that I can just... I'm going to understand this one way or another when I'm done. And that actually starts my Friday reads. Uh, my That starts my weekend. And but after that, though, we, we go on to normal books. I don't know how many normal books. I know for sure that when I'm done rereading these, I'm pretty sure I will be the only person other than the author and his editor who has read these things twice. Uh, I, I'm almost positive that no other critic will will even read all of them, much less read the whole of both volumes twice. Uh, and I'd be curious to know, I'd be curious to see, once these two volumes are out, and maybe maybe a lot of, uh, of coverage editors 
have thought, well, I don't want to do volume one if volume two is going to tag along later, and I'm certainly not going to give two Volman reviews in one season. So my, I'll wait till volume two. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go through my card catalog and see who might be willing to do a review of both volumes together. I'll be interested in seeing if the two volumes together get long reviews in any major journals. Uh, but one way or another, uh, once I'm done rereading these, I'm going to treat myself to another rereading. We just saw it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to wait. It's uh, Song in a Weary Throat by the Reverend Polly Murray. Uh, it's a, a, an absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, French flaps, decal-edged, uh, liverite reprint of her memoir about facing every single kind of obstacle that life can throw at you and overcoming them all. Uh, and I, I, it's been a long time since I read it, and it's, it's, it's not going to be the same kind of rereading experience as the Carbon Ideology, so, and it's going to be just the kind I need. But then when I'm done with that, that will probably bring us all the way to Saturday morning. And when I'm done with all of that rereading, then I will launch into reading. And I don't know, uh, I, I really don't see any, any light at the end of the tunnel beyond the Carbon Ideology. So I, I know I'm going to do a lot of reading this weekend. But right now, all I can think of it, it's 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 just it's this enormous cloud that is totally obscuring my reading horizon. But I have I have two books here uh, that I know I want to get to this weekend. I just I don't know when I will do it. I don't know uh, how energetically I will. I will we'll see what, what the Polly Murray book can do for me. Uh, but the first one is is this. This is by Tariq Bekoni. This is his book on uh, Hamas, and it, it's a. Uh, it's rumored, I mean, not just his publicist, I've, I've, I've emailed with its, its publicist, but it also I've emailed with a few other people, and it's it's rumored to be an extremely unconventional history of Hamas. Uh, a look at them almost from their own viewpoint, but not apologetics. So I, uh, I think that'd be fascinating. It strikes me on the one hand almost as if you couldn't do that. Uh, for instance, I know I know that this author is fond of saying that Hamas uh, isn't quite a government, but that it isn't only a resistance movement, and that it certainly cannot be reduced simply to a terrorist organization. And I don't, I don't, I don't know how you would do that. <laughs> I don't know how you would do that. I'm not saying it can't be done. I just I don't know how you would do that. And uh, I have read. I'm no expert by any means, but I have read a mountain of books on the Israel-Palestine conflict and on Hamas and on the the state of Palestine. And I, I, this will be fascinating. This will be fascinating to read no matter what, even if I don't end up agreeing with the author. The author, I believe, is extremely young. Uh, I don't know if this... <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's extremely young and he's a cutie patootie. So, so, so I... Uh, I that doesn't that doesn't mean anything probative. I'm certainly not above learning something from somebody who's extremely young. <laughs> it happens every time I have guests over here. <laughs> uh, but I'm curious to know. I'm curious to know what he will do with it. And then the uh, the next book is also a subject that I know very well. <laughs> I was writing about it while it was happening. Uh, but, we, but that gives me an, a bottomless sweet tooth to read about it now, and that's, of course, the Reagan administration. And this is uh, Fox News journalist Brett Baer, uh, one of the... you, you if, you're, if you watch uh, East and West Coast liberal news media, uh, the, the talking heads, when they're talking about the latest outrage from the state propaganda arm of Fox News will always say, almost like a refrain, that there are real journalists who work at Fox News. There are people who 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 uh, don't just kiss the ring and toe the party line, but that actually are trying to do good work. Uh, and Brett Baer's name always comes up. Shepard Smith's name always comes up. The tone is always the same with these, with these uh, left-wing television hosts with Lawrence O'Donnell or Rachel Matter or whatever. The tone is always, there are some real journalists there, and I don't know why they don't leave. <laughs> and I, I admit, I'm, I'm sometimes curious about that myself. I think any any news organization anywhere in the world would be happy to have Brett Baer. He must just like where he is. Uh, but in addition to being there, uh, he also writes books. And he wrote a previous book about uh, Eisenhower that I kind of sort of liked. Uh, and this is Three Days in Moscow. This is his his book, not about the beginning of the Cold War, but about the end of the Cold War. This is uh, he's chosen as his subject 
a speech that Ronald Reagan gave at Moscow State University a year before the Berlin Wall fell, in which he got up at the podium and talked to an audience of Russian students about freedom, about Western democracy-style freedom, about how they need not accept living in what Reagan himself years before had called the evil empire. Uh, and I guess that the focus in this book, Bear's focus in this book, is that that was a totally remarkable watershed moment of a speech, largely overlooked by the big events that, that followed it the next year. And the more I think about it, the more I think that might have something to it. Uh, so although I don't usually like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not usually, I don't usually end up liking keyhole histories like this, where you go at one little thing and try to ex ex extrapolate all kinds of stuff from it. Uh, this author has actually done that well in a previous book. And in this case, I'm willing to see, again, what he will do. So uh, so I've got those two, uh, one on Hamas and one on Ronald Reagan, that uh, will definitely be part of the weekend's reading. Now, I, I'm going to grapple with the carbon ideologies all day long. <laughs> all day long. All afternoon when I'm not writing, all evening, then at midnight, I stop writing, I stop social media, I stop everything, and I read the carbon ideologies all night long. <laughs> and when I'm done with that, I'm going to move on to Song in a Weary Throat uh, and reread it just for the joy of it. No pencil in hand, just for the joy of it. Uh, I might write about it uh, at Open Letters. I don't, I don't know. That would be fun. I wouldn't, it never occurred to me the last time I read it that I would ever write about it or have the chance to. Uh, so I might do that, but I, I don't need to take critical notes to do that. Uh, but you've got to keep in mind here that although the carbon ideologies is enormous, and although Song in a Weary Throat is kind of long too by normal reading standards, even so, those two things, that concentrated on the one book and then that reprint, are only going to bring me to Saturday morning. And and uh, this, the Hamas book is uh, 300 pages long, and the Brad Bear book is almost 400 pages long. And that is... Uh, at most another six hours of reading. So uh, the, these two books that are not rereads, these two books that are new for me, uh, will only get me to Saturday evening. So there'll still be more reading to do, and I, I don't know, I never know on these on these Friday reads, uh, I don't know what that reading will be. I don't have any plans for what I'll be reading on Sunday, and I never know whether or not I should just do a follow-up on Monday morning uh, video, I mean, to let you know what I did, in fact, end up reading the whole of the weekend. <laughs> but I don't want to lay it on too thick. And besides, I don't know that I'm going to survive the carbon ideologies. <laughs> so I will, I, will, I will wrap this video up for now, and then I will dig right into it. <laughs> I think on the one, on one level, uh, the, the thing I'll be using, the mind frame that I'll be using to try to keep the carbon ideologies from overwhelming me, uh, just with its length and its complexity, is the knowledge that the whole of the carbon ideologies, the whole of the whole world of carbon energy, is a finite, closed system. It is a self-evidently flawed system. So all of the thinking and philosophizing and personalities and quotes and alternatives and histories and whatnot that go into both of these huge volumes are about something that isn't going to exist in a century. And you know that, and that helps you if you're if you're feeling intimidated by a book this size. It helps you to, if you remember that, just a bit. So I did the same thing with Yuri Slezkin's House of Government, uh, his twelve hundred page book on one apartment building in Soviet Russia. I made I, I I did the same thing when I was reading that in order to keep it at, at enough distance so that I didn't get overwhelmed by it. I just kept remembering, okay, well, the entire state and the ideology that this whole thing was built on failed and is no longer does no longer exist so you, you can keep that in mind this is a footnote in history and and mankind burning fossil fuels and carbon fuels is definitely a footnote in history we don't know what the chapter will read but we we know for sure that's true it's not sustainable so <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do when i dive in right now uh but i will i will try to make another video today or maybe two uh and if i do i'll see you again if not We'll, we'll convene in any case tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, book two.